Welcome back to another week of Engage here at Lord of Life. We're glad to have you gathering with us as we come together again to hear the word proclaimed with us, to gather for a meal, and to be sent back out in faith. We want to remind you of a few things that are happening at Lord of Life over the next couple of weeks. First, on Sunday mornings, we have lots of opportunities for you to come by the church building and participate in a number of different things. You can bring items for our birthday box collection as part of our God's Work, Our Hands uh, efforts with Angel Reach, where we're collecting items that go into birthday boxes for our foster children in our communities. You can also come by simply to receive a blessing from one of the pastors, myself or Pastor Gary, who will be out front there waiting to greet you and your family. Of course, today is also the blessing of the backpacks, as you'll see in just a few moments. So as we head back to school, uh, we'll encourage you to grab your backpack and have that as part of our worship service this morning. You can also come to the church either August 16th or August 23rd, uh, and you can receive a special gift for your backpack as you go back to school in whatever capacity it is that we're going back to school in. And then last, on Sunday morning still, we have us an opportunity for you to come and purchase some fair trade coffee. We've got some wonderful uh, Lutheran fair trade coffee here at the church church and we're uh, giving it out to the congregation so if you'd like to make uh, that a part of your routine at home uh, you can come and pick that up here so every Sunday morning those things are happening between 10 and noon uh, the 16th and the 23rd and then also August 30th so we hope to see you at one of those events as we start to uh, come back together and find ways to reconnect in these strange times this morning, I am going to invite you to go ahead and grab your backpack or whatever it is that you're using as you go back to school. If you're a student, if you're a teacher, administrator, if you're working in the cafeteria or driving a bus or substituting, whatever it is that you might be doing, grab whatever it is that you have um, so that we can pray for you and so that we can bless our time together as we uh, head back to school this fall. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of our students and our teachers and everyone who participates in their education. We ask you to bless them as they go back to school in these new and strange times this year. Whether they're meeting one another for the first time on a computer or they're able to gather together in person, whatever faces them this year, may you remind them of your strength and your love that goes with them everywhere they go. As they carry this backpack, wherever they travel, may it be a reminder of your love and of the love of this congregation that goes with them as they face these new challenging times. We ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We hope that you have a wonderful school year, whatever that might look like for you. This morning, as always, we're going to have some chance to sing together in a little bit of music, and then we'll come back together for conversation as Pastor Gary brings us the message today.
Howdy everybody. The gospel reading for this Sunday is recorded in Matthew, the 15th chapter, as we continue to talk about signs of the kingdom of heaven. So this starts with uh, verse 21 in chapter 15, if you'd like to follow along at home. From there, Jesus took a trip to Tyre and Sidon. They had hardly arrived when a Canaanite woman came down from the hills and pleaded, Mercy, Master, son of David, my daughter is cruelly afflicted with an evil spirit. Jesus ignored her. The disciples came and complained, Now she's bothering us. Would you please take care of her? She's driving us crazy. Jesus refused, telling them, I've got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then the woman came back to Jesus, fell on her knees and begged him, Master, help me. Jesus said, it's not right to take the bread out of the children's mouths and throw it to the dogs. She was quick. You're right, Master, but beggar dogs do get the scraps from the master's table. And Jesus replied, oh woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. Right then, her daughter was made well. Well, what a story, huh? So, do you know what the, fa the phrase going to the dogs means? It's an old saying that I've heard over the years. Basically, the dictionary says it's a rapidly deteriorating situation, a worsening situation, losing of value, all sorts of things like that. It's usually applied to countries or to organizations that are going to the dogs. Uh, we heard about it that way in the 1960s in this country when I was in college and there were the uh, anti-war protests and the uh, race riots in the 60s and people would say, look at this, our country is going to the dogs. The same thing was talked about in the church uh, at a later point when we all started wearing blue jeans and tennis shoes to church and some people were mortified. This church is going to the dogs, how can they dress like that? Well, so is the church going to the dogs these days? in the midst of everything that's going on around us? Is Lord of Life going to the dog specifically? Well, in our gospel story today, some people thought Jesus was going to the dogs and his mission was going to the dogs. You know, his mission was to go to the house of Israel, the people of Israel, the Jews, to save them, proclaim the kingdom to them. And yet, this is a turning point in this gospel in which uh, uh, Jesus goes, makes a turn from the Jews to the Gentiles. And so Tyre and Sidon are in a Canaanite territory. So uh, he goes in and he ends up healing this woman's uh, daughter. And when she begs him for help, and you can tell that it even starts to change Jesus' perspective of the scope of his mission as well. So, is the church going to the dogs? Was Jesus going to the dogs? Let's back up a little bit. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever felt like you were, you were being left out of something? Or like you didn't fit in? Uh, well, our conferments this weekend have been part of a two-year program in which we worked so hard to make sure all of those kids, all 18 of them this year, felt like they belonged, like they fit in, like this was a place for them. And we hope they felt like they fit in and belonged. But eighth grade people, especially at that age of life, one of the most critical things in your life is being able to fit in, to belong, right? And I remember my time of going through that. It can feel like a life and death issue. And, uh, and some kids do even commit suicide because they feel so depressed and left out, they see no hope for their life. Um, well, my experience, eighth grade, I grew up in a family where there was just a lot of conflict, and a lot of violence, and I didn't want to have anything to do with that. However, in eighth grade, in my school at least, in junior high, one of the guidelines for being an eighth grader was that you had to fight each other to figure out the pecking order. The boys all had to have fist fights to figure out who was above who and who was below who. And so it came my turn. I kept trying to avoid having these fights by joking or by whatever. But ultimately, 
a whole group of guys came to me and said, okay, you're gonna have to fight Paul Osterhus. Well, Paul was smaller than me and probably smarter than me. We were both in advanced classes, but uh, at any rate, so they set the time and we had to meet out in the gully behind the school and I, I just didn't show up. And uh, oh my gosh, um, I, I just ditched him. And, and you know what, uh, destroyed my reputation in that school. Even with the girls that I liked, they wouldn't talk to me because I had chickened out of a fight. Oh, it was devastating. It was so tough because I got isolated, cut off in the lunchroom, um, threatened, you know, by some of the other guys. And I just had to keep on avoiding people. It was just the most painful thing in my life to be able to have to be cut off because I refused to fight. I think, by the way, Paul Osterhus was probably relieved because he didn't like fighting either. <laughs> but at any rate, um, what happened? Well, I was going through my confirmation time at Grace Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, and I was learning more and more about who Jesus was and what he was like and what it meant for the church to be a welcoming and including people and inviting people. And how Jesus was doing that through all of his ministry, inviting, including people of all kinds. And, um, and over time, I came to understand that that was more important to me, belonging to Jesus and fitting in with Jesus, than fitting in with any of my peers. And so, uh, by high school, thank God things change, you know, and, and there were kids uh, are growing up a little bit, and we don't have to fight anymore. And, uh, and I worked my way up to try and get into the in crowd, and I did. I got a job, and I uh, made some money, I got a car, and, uh, and that made me popular, and I got a whole new wardrobe. And when I came back to school in that, that fall, I was popular. I got elected to the church, the, stu the student council even. How do you like that? But you know what? As I grew through this time in my confirmation studies, I came to recognize more and more the people who were being left out, not just me, but others, in school in, in, and in society, and even in the church. And it became important to me that just as Jesus included me in his family, in his kingdom of heaven, I was called to include others. And that has become, ever since, a part of my understanding of who I am as a Christian, including those who feel left out, the least, the lost, the left out, the people on the margins. And so that's been a big part of my whole career is looking for, seeking out those who are on the fringes who don't feel like they belong and make sure they are welcomed into the fold. And uh, so that's how some of that affected me because of Jesus welcoming me. That more important than any kind of peer pressure the love of Jesus was what defined who I am and what I was going to do with my life. So stories like this one of Jesus, demonstrating that the gifts of God, of love, healing, everything, they all belong to everyone. And even Jesus, it seems, had to grow into a broader understanding of what it meant to include people because he first started out just seeking his fellow Jews the children, lost children of the house of Israel. And here, this Canaanite woman, she becomes so persistent, desperate for her daughter, who is demon-possessed, that, that she keeps on bugging him until finally he relents. And he realizes, because she says, he says, it's not good to throw the children's food to the dogs, meaning outsiders, and um, so she says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs get the scraps from the master's table. And Jesus, you could tell, almost like a light went on. You're right. Woman, great is your faith. Your daughter is healed. Wow. Isn't that something? So let me tell you what. I'm thinking of our confirmation kids as they listen this morning, too, and this, this morning. But all of us, if Jesus had to keep growing in his understanding of his mission and who he was, don't you think we need to as well? To look for, in this goodness and grace of God, those who are feel excluded from the love of grace of God and invite them into it.
just as Jesus did. And I don't know about you, but I want to keep growing until the day I die, understanding what it means to follow Jesus and be an includer. So, is the church going to the dogs? I sure hope so. <laughs> because I'm one of them. I have been one of them. Maybe you have been. And whether you felt that or not, we are called to go to the lost, the least, the left out of society. Starting with you and me when we feel left out. You know, our mission at Board of Life is pretty clear on this. It challenges us to grow and think about this. It says, we seek and welcome all to connect, celebrate, and serve in God's love. That's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? Thank goodness that Jesus was going to the dogs, so to speak. And if the church is going to the dogs, it's on the right track. Have a good time discussing this uh, conversation that we've been having this morning with the questions that follow. And remember that there are prayers there for you to use or simply offer your own prayers for your family, the church, the world. And please consider making your offering today online uh, or by mail because we desperately need your help to keep this ministry going. Have a great day. God bless. Welcome back. We hope you had a great opportunity for discussion with one another and an opportunity to, pr to pray for those needs that were lifted up in your community. As we come back together, we're ready for communion. So if you haven't already, we encourage you to grab some bread and some wine or grape juice so that you can join us in the special meal. You know, when Jesus first instituted this meal with his disciples, it was a pretty crazy time. And in the years after that, the disciples and the followers of Jesus would continue to gather in pretty, well, hard to speak of circumstances. Rooms were crowded, things were nuts, people were crying in the background, who knows what else would have been going on. But in the middle of all of it, Jesus was always present. And so they continued to gather week after week to share this holy meal that we're gonna join in together. As we again remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. As we share in the meal together, we invite you to use the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. So now come to the table where all are welcome, for these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. So now as we're sent back into the world, we invite you to receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Brings life and health and peace. 